All right, before we get to the chip of the day, let's talk about some concepts. Uh, let's say we have a load, okay? That could be a motor, it could be a light bulb, it could be all kinds of stuff, right? You have a big load and you wanna turn it on and off. You wanna, you wanna control it. So you hook it up to some voltage and then down here you put a uh, NPN transistor and then you can control this load. You turn the transistor on, it turns the device on, all right? But uh, let's say that you want to control the, uh, the load like this. Let's say the load is grounded and you only have access to the positive side and you want to put, a, uh, you want to put in a transistor to control the load. All right. Now, if you put in a NPN transistor, then you, in order to turn on the NPN transistor, you would need a voltage higher than the voltage you have. You would need something bigger, bigger than plus V in order to turn the uh, transistor on. And so instead you put in a, a, a PNP transistor and then uh, all you have to do is uh, pull down and you'll get current flowing through the emitter and then you'll turn it on. So you can use these. This one you can turn on with a positive voltage and this one you can turn on with a ground. And so sometimes you want to use NPNs and sometimes you want to use PNPs. All right. In the modern world, if we're going to <laughs> turn on a load, let's say we have a load here and we want to turn it on with a, a transistor. We're going to use an NFET, an N-channel, an N-channel MOSFET, okay? And then all we need here is some type of plus voltage, okay? So some some plus voltage, um, as long as it's bigger than this, uh, than is required. This might be, say, a 12 volt, but you can turn this on with maybe only three volts. Um, and so you use an N-channel, all right? So what if we had a, a condition where we had a load and ground and we want to control it on the uh, on the high side okay well again we would need a voltage higher than the plus V we would need something even bigger and so what we're going to do is we're going to use a, uh, a P channel a P channel MOSFET a P channel MOSFET um, basically goes in the opposite direction, all right? So think of N channels as NPNs and P channels as P and P's, so right? The P, follow the P and the N, right? N, N, P, P. P and P, P channel, NPN, N channel. All right, I think a lot of people are, are familiar with the N channels, but maybe you haven't had a chance to play with a P channel. So today's chip of the day is going to be, uh, what's it, I'm writing it down, let me show it to you. It's going to be a IRF D9110, okay? And uh, this particular one was made by Harris. The original one was probably International Rectifier, um, made the, the first part, but this is a better copy of the uh, data sheet. Um, and it's in a funny little package. It's in a dip package, it looks like a dip. Okay, if you just kind of ran across this, it's a four pin dip and it's, it's kind of narrow. And you, you look at it, you'd immediately say, oh, that's an optocoupler because they have a, a similar package size, all right? You'd say, oh, that's an optocoupler. No, this one is a P-channel NFET, a, a P-channel uh, FET, right? P-channel FET. And uh, so uh, these things are a little bit strange um, they have a protection diode, and just like the end channels have a protection diode, these have a protection, a protection diode as well. Now, if you use your voltmeter with in, in uh, well, heck, let's do it. Let's do it on camera. Let's do it live. All right, so uh, let me get my... Uh, turn this out. We'll go to uh, diode check, all right, and we will go between uh, drain and source, and we get. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, you get. We get uh, 0.6 volts, right? So we're measuring. We're measuring this uh, 
this diode, okay? This diode right there, we're, we're measuring that diode. If we, uh, if we flip it around, uh, the, uh, we get no ohmages at all, right? So, um, all right, which means we can only use it in the right direction, okay? If we try to, move this down, if we try to make electricity go, use, use it in this direction, that diode's just gonna short, short, circumvent, short, short circuit anything we're trying to do. You need to use it in the opposite direction. You, you kinda, need to, kinda need to use it like this, okay? And so because of that, because it's kind of all upside down and stuff, when they give the specifications, they give them as minus voltages, right? So it's a minus 100 volt part and it, and it passes minus 0.7 amps, okay? Just kind, of, just kind of the opposite, just a kind of a weird, a weird way of thinking about it. All right, let me uh, draw another picture here. So we are going to have a circuit and it's gonna look like this. We're gonna have a, uh, an LED and a 1K resistor. And uh, this is going to be grounded. And then this is going to be our plus 12. Okay, this is going to be our P-channel, um, our P-channel device. And uh, we will connect this to plus 12 and see what happens. And then we'll connect it to zero and see what happens, all right? And so I'll just bring it over here. Um, so if I have the gate here and I move it to ground, it turns on because it's like a PNP, right? If I pull it down, it turns on. And if I put it at plus 12, it turns off because now there's no potential across that gate. So um, kind of the fun thing to do is uh, touch it to ground and then let it float. Now that wire is not connected to anything, but it stays on, okay? And this is how dynamic memory works. Dynamic memory is a whole bunch of little capacitors on FETs that hold this charge long enough for you to come back and rewrite it. It's kind of fragile because if anything kind of gets near it, uh, you can get it to go off. Let's see here if we get a little bit of negative. Oh, it's already on. I'm sorry. So what I want to do is, uh, let's see here. Turn it on, turn it off. Okay, now it's off. And I'm going to touch it and this comes, it comes on. Okay. So it will hold a charge and then you can bleed it off with your finger. So there it's holding a charge in the positive state and here it's holding the charge in the, in the ground state. So plus minus. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and instead of putting in, um, ground in plus 12, let's put a, uh, a potentiometer here. Okay. I'm not drawing very well today, but I'm going to put a potentiometer so we can put anywhere from zero to 12 volts, anything from zero to 12 volts into the circuit. And that's what this is going to do over here. Uh, I'm going to put it in here. And now if I turn the little knob, it comes on and turn the little knob, it goes off. Okay. So let's measure the voltages that we, that we're introducing. Okay. So we're looking at the gate, the gate voltage. All right, so let's come back out. Everything's kind of kind of in the way today here. Uh, let's see here, can we just turn that on? Yeah, that's better. All right, so it's in, it's in the off position here and I'm gonna lower it down to 11 volts, 10 volts. And when it just starts to come on, it's just starting to come on, it's at nine volts, okay? Uh, nine volts coming on. And then if I go to f eight volts, it's, it's hard on. And then, uh, five volts, it's hard on. And then, um, zero volts. Okay. So basically if you think of it upside down, okay, we need about nine volts, which is basically, um, minus three volts. When it gets to about minus three volts on the gate, we're starting to conduct. 
And by the time we get to minus uh, 8, did I just do that calculation wrong? 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah, 3 volts. <laughs> and then when we get down to 4 volts, this is minus, minus 4 volts, it's on basically as good as it gets, all right? I wish I could leave that on. Maybe there's a way to do that. Um, but anyway, uh, at 8 volts, this thing is going to be on all the way. Now, that's not exactly true for all drive conditions, all right? So you need to check the data sheet on how much voltage is required. If you're going to put maybe, you know, um, what is this thing good for? 0.7 amps. If you're putting half an amp into it, you may require um, a bigger voltage differential. All right. So um, let me show you maybe a trap for uh, trap for the younger crowd. Let's say you're going to use one of these things. You're going to have some type of load here. This is plus 12. And you want to you wanna go over here to an Arduino. Okay, and the Arduino is a uh, five volt logic. Okay, five volt. Lo I'm sorry. Let me zoom way down here. So we have this circuit. We're going to turn on this load. Here's our load, and we want to turn it on with an Arduino. Now, an Arduino goes between zero volts and five volts. Okay, so if we bring this around over here to the Arduino, if we put in zero volts, it turns it on. Great. If we put in five volts does not turn it off. It continually turns it on. So you cannot control the load with zero and five volts. It will not work, okay? You need to add additional circuitry, okay? And so the thing you would add would be a, uh, a transistor to ground with a pull-up, okay? Um, plus 12, all right? Now, you could control this with the Arduino. Now, the Arduino could turn this transistor on and off with five volts, and then it will control the PNP. So you need to add an extra step here, okay? Um, if you have extra logic, like you're building something with maybe um, uh, analog circuitry, uh, or even, even digital circuitry, if you can find a component that has an open collector output, so some uh, comparators have open collector outputs, and some TTL chips have open collector outputs, um, then uh, you can drive them directly with the open collector because it's basically this transistor. Um, so again, P channel. Um, you need to look for the little arrows. Sometimes they're not drawn correctly, but you need to watch the little, the little arrows. In fact, I drew it wrong. That's an N channel. A P channel has the little arrow going the other direction. P channel has the arrow going in. N channel has the arrow going out. Okay. So it would look, if you wanted to draw one by hand, you would basically draw it like this, okay? And the gate, the gate is usually drawn with a, with a uh, kind of an L here, kind of denoting that there's a capacitor here, right? You have this capacitance here, um, some kind of big L, and uh, that's for the gate. And then the little arrow tells you whether it's an NPN or a PNP. Now, sometimes the protection diode is shown um, on the schematic, but most of the time it's left off, so you have to remember it's there. All right, uh, chip of the day was the IRFD9113, and I'll leave you with a more dramatic demonstration. Here's a 12 volt, 12 volt lamp, and I can turn it on, and I can turn it off, and I can actually kind of turn it on just a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. Kind of turn it on just a little bit. But uh, yep, there we go. And that's a nice big load.